engineering is the application of scientific principles to practical ends such as the design, construction and operation of efficient and economical structures. By understanding the reasons behind design features and manufacturing techniques, marine engineers can operate their engines with a greater depth of understanding of the loadings, both mechanical and thermal. A full understanding of the engines as a whole, and as individual components or systems, makes the ship's engineer, a more competent and self-reliant operator. This topic, aims to provide an insight into the individual component of an engine, and, how they interrelate with the other component to provide a reliable and operation whole. An indicator diagram traces out the pressure and volume relationships in the cylinder of an engine on rectangular axes, and it can be used to estimate the work done by the engine per cycle. The indicator must move a vertical distance proportional to the pressure in the cylinder and the drum, as it rotates, provides a horizontal motion proportional to the change in cylinder volume. The indicator is connected to a screwed cock which is in connection with the combustion chamber of the cylinder being monitored. When the engine cock is opened, the cylinder pressure also acts on the piston in the indicator cylinder, causing it to rise. This vertical movement is resisted by a spring the strength of which is chosen to obtain a diagram illustrating the part of the cycle being investigated. The vertical movement of the piston is transferred to the pen mechanism by a parallel motion linkage. The indicator card is held onto the drum with spring clips. The drum is rotated against an internal spring pressure by a special wire reinforced, non-elastic cord which, being wrapped around the drum several times, is led to a linkage operated by a cam, the cam throw being proportional to the stroke of the engine. When the cord is attached to the cam mechanism and the indicator cock is opened, a PV diagram is obtained by lightly pressing the stylus onto the card. From the area of this diagram and the stiffness of the indicator spring it is possible to calculate the indicated power output of the cylinder. IP equals average height of diagram multiple with spring scale, engine constant, and engine revolution. The average height of the diagram is found by measuring its area and dividing this area by the length of the card. The area can be found by using the mid-ordinate rule or similar, or by using a plan limiter. The length of the diagram should always be the same as the throw of the cam but should be measured in any case as any deviation from the recorded length indicates a fault with the indicator mechanism. Too long a diagram would indicate that the drum spring is, perhaps, not tensioned sufficiently and the drum is skidding beyond its warranted travel. Too short and maybe the drum is incorrectly set up and insufficient rotation is occurring. Similarly, faults on the cord or pulleys may become apparent if the measured card length deviates from the original set length. The faults mentioned above may not be immediately apparent so it is always necessary to measure the length as a cross-check. The spring's scale is marked on the spring itself and is a measure of the pressure required to compress the spring through a quoted length 6 bars to a centimeter, for example. The engine constant is the stroke of the engine multiplied by the cylinder bore area. Apart from taking power cards, the standard PV diagram, the indicator may be used to take cards 90 degree out of phase, draw cards. A draw card is merely a diagram taken with the drum rotation advanced by 90 degree to the main piston of the engine. This allows the injection period to be spread out across the center of the card so that the combustion process can be examined more closely. The same spring is used for both power and draws cards, and can also be used to measure the compression pressure. It is best to do this with the engine running slowly, as slow compression highlights leakage that could be associated with worn liners piston rings or even a leaky exhaust valve. With the fuel shut off the relevant cylinder, the compression card can be taken with or without the drum rotating. If the drum is pulled slowly around by hand as the indicator response to rising cylinder pressure, a series of vertical lines will be drawn on the card. 
the average height of these lines will provide the compression pressure for that cylinder. If the drum is rotated as before, by the power cam, a single rising curve should be obtained, and the height is the compression pressure. If a double line appears on the car the cam drive system is either advanced or retarded with respect to the crankshaft. Before taking a set of cards, ensure that the engine has completely warmed through, and that the engine speed and load are stable. That is avoid taking the cards in heavy weather. Plug each cock through before attaching the indicator, because carbon particles entering the mechanism will adversely affect its operation. Ensure that the card is correctly fitted and that the correct spring tensions are set. Lubricate the piston as necessary and take the card by pressing the stylus slightly onto the paper. Draw an atmospheric line first, by closing the cock and rotating the drum under cam actuation. Do not pull it by hand. The power card can then be drawn by opening the indicator cock and, again, pressing the stylus slightly onto the card. The atmospheric line is drawn using the cam system so that its length can be measured and checked against the original. Any deviation, as explained earlier, is a result of an indicator fault. The atmospheric line also gives a datum from which the height of the diagram can be measured to determine the firing pressure, or compression pressure as the case may be.